GMMB is responsible for the managing of these irreplaceable resources for the continued education and enjoyment of present and future generations in our museums as shown in recently reopened National Museum Gallery and other regional museums. As you are aware, heritage management constitutes planning, controlling and ensuring that heritage is protected to serve the well-being of societies as well as assignment of value to the heritage, which is put into practice through an assessment of the significance of a particular site through archaeological research like the one undertaken by Professor Paul and his team at the Marine Drive Project. It is worth mentioning that the significance of every heritage and the well-being of host communities is the driving force behind heritage management in the world today. This significance is required for the demonstration of, the, of a potential nomination to the National Register Database, which we are developing soon. Moreover, the value of material heritage guided our choice made in what is conserved and what is destroyed, whether for development or research programs. How we categorize the heritage, how we manage it and mitigate the impact of the threats. It is therefore necessary to trace the geology of significance scientifically through archaeological methods, both because of the present day import it carries in authorizing and shaping the construction of the past within national heritage management programs. And because of the far reaching implications of current changes in meaning and usage upon translation to the global state. To ensure consistent, effective stewardship, the GMMB is developing comprehensive research permit application guidelines that will encompass the following categories, preservation, planning, archaeological, historical, site management, underwater archaeological research, conservation, interpretation, curation, public information, and education. The GMMB strongly encourages cooperation with other agencies and individuals interested in preserving our heritage. Let me use this opportunity to inform the department and the students here present that as part of building the capacity of the youth and young heritage professionals in our institution, and young heritage professionals, our institution is open for internships and other programs which they can take advantage of. Finally, I want to thank the Office of the Marine Drive Project, the University of Ghana, the School of Art, and the Department of Archaeology and Heritage Studies for making this project possible. Thank you for your attention. I would like to first congratulate Professor Paul and his team of curators for putting together this exhibition on the salvage archaeology and marine drive heritage of Usu. As we know, this municipality of Osu has become a very fast-growing metropolitan area over the past three decades. Indeed, I think that for a lot of us, Osu is all about Oxford Street and papaya and places to eat. We don't consider that there's a lot of stuff under the ground that we stand. So we also admit that a lot of archaeological materials may be buried under or destroyed by developments within Usu and its environs, I'm nevertheless pleased to learn that the Department of Archaeology and Heritage Studies has been at the forefront of this expedition to salvage these priceless relics before any irreversible, irreversible loss as a result of the Marine Drive project. So the call for salvage archaeology or archaeological investigations before development is more crucial now than ever before, since we risk losing priceless vestiges of our history as a people if we don't heed this call. Given this, I would like to add my voice to the numerous calls on relevant government and allied institutions to make such investigations an integral part of developmental projects, not just within the greater Accra region, 
but indeed throughout Ghana. So I'm really excited to hear from the director that this um, approach to development is something that is also central within the policies of the Ghana Museums and Monuments Board. And I'm also really, really excited to have him here instead of um, usually having somebody who comes to say that he's coming to read the speech of the director. And as far as I'm concerned, we are not going to wait for him to go to his office before we stampede him with the intensive request. In fact, as we are drinking and eating and watching, I expect that the students will be putting their letters together and then we send by WhatsApp directly into his, into his account. So that it will meet him there, it will be waiting for him when he, when he gets there. But um, I think that on another note, I mean, when you look at this brochure, you see the, a lot of work that is being done. But what is equally troubling is that you see the forecasted and anticipated high-rise developments that we think we are heading towards. So this project wouldn't have come at a better time. The time is now before um, I mean, direct, uh, Dean, if you look at this, I haven't been to Dubai before, but I have an idea that this is exactly what it looks like over there. So I think that it's a fantastic project, and it's an opportune project that's come at the right time. So let's put our resources together to make it happen, and uh, the college is going to give you all the support that it, it, um, it has at its disposal, which has begun by my very presence here. I'm going to spend a whole hour or more of the college's time here. That, it cannot be more important than that. So to quote again from um, uh, Jackie, you can be sure that all of us at the college, our minds are there for you. So we are here for you. Thank you very much. We started from 2018 when we got a hint that construction work uh, began at the Marine Drive project site. We went there and sought permission from the contractor before doing a reconnaissance survey, walking over the places that have been destroyed by caterpillars and uh, earth-moving vehicles. Fortunately for us, we did locate some good sites. Um, the Marine Drive project, as you can see from the brochure, is a flagship project which, according to sources, was initiated in the 1960s by Dr. Nkrumah, but now being given impetus by the current government. It entails the development of the beachfront of Osu from the western environs of the Christian Ball Castle through the back of the Asunye Park and the Black Star Square, uh, all the way to the Art Center and Bidding Power Memorial Hall. There is much about this project online to assess. Our attention today is about the intervention of archaeology in this mega earth-moving project. Salvage archaeology, if I need to school you a little bit, is a technique used by archaeologists to salvage or recover cultural remains that are under threat of destruction by earth-moving uh, vehicles, doing modernization projects, as well as uh, salvaging information and relics uh, due to impact of natural disasters like uh, coastal, coastal erosions on our coastlines. A lot of our vestiges are going underground in, inside the water. So your statement that you are promoting underwater archaeology, I think, is meaningful. Um, we do have underwater archaeology as one of the courses here, but we lack the expertise to teach. I think we need to look at it, HOD, since um, GMMB is making some inroads in providing some job for those people we are going to train. So, um, the lamentations of of archaeologists in Ghana is that there is no law that mandates earth-moving companies to undertake heritage impact 
assessment or employ the services of archaeology firms to conduct archaeological survey in their areas of impact before they build their dams, their airports, the real estate, highways, or railways in Ghana. The absence of such law makes it easy for such earth-moving companies to destroy heritage with impunity. It is only in exceptional cases that services of archaeologists are used after we lobby them or after we make noise or on some uh, projects that are funded by the IFC or the World Bank requires archaeological intervention. But if we don't make the right noise, we don't get it uh, done. And so we see a lot of destructions around us. We were expecting us to be engaged in the flagship uh, railway development project as HOD mentioned, but we didn't get any invitation to that. So, what we have achieved in this case at the Marine Drive site was based on luck and determination to salvage remains despite the lack of official invitation at the onset of earth-moving activities. Knowing the ancient nature of the site where the early Osu and Peshi people lived, where they were bombarded by the English to move elsewhere in the 1850s, a place where, which is an ancient crossroad of cultural contacts and hybridization, an environment where the slave trade flourished to be followed by colonial entanglements and into the current post-colonial entrainments on the site. So, having salvage remains pertaining to all these periods in Osu, history means not all is lost due to our intervention. Archaeological expeditions are expensive to do detailed, sustained research, and archaeologists need sound funding. I declare the salvage archaeology and marine heritage of Osu exhibition duly open. Please relax, enjoy, and learn as well. Thank you very much. So here yeah, you see fauna remains representing the food sources, both marine and terrestrial uh, sources. And we gave it to specialists, the zoology uh, department, and they were able to tell us the species of animals that were consumed, both domesticates and uh, wild animals. So here yeah, some of the colleagues in the zoology department are interested in deriving some genes from these you know, bones in order to trace migration of animals and extinction of animals in Ghana. So it's just being archaeology. Yeah. Those in the oceanography department also want the shells to also learn about transformations of uh, marine animals. Over here you see remains of uh, ceramics. You can see the enforced Ghana coat of arms. Yeah. Meaning these were probably used by Dr. Nkrumah mm -hmm. to fist, mm -hmm. you know, the Christian <laughs> broadcast. Yeah, in the process, yeah, yeah some things happen and they go home. So, and maybe what caused that to happen, you see it better off in terms of alcoholic bottles and glasses. <laughs>
sometimes you know that we were like you know being viewed as primitive and all that. This is not the primitive advanced. I'm highly impressed. I think it's a fantastic um, work that they have done. Like I said at the opening, a lot of us go to Osu and we are thinking fried rice and chicken and, you know, Frankie's ice cream and so on. And so we don't remember that we are standing on terra firma and there's a lot of knowledge underneath our feet. So I think it's a very good start that we've done. When you look at the exhibit, you can clearly tell you about the way of life of the people who have come before us. So this is something that is, is important. And this is also something that the National Museum also takes from. So we start from here, and then we teach students, and then we expand, escalate the knowledge into the public arena for people to learn about how those who have come before us used to live. And then we can also learn lessons from them as well. And, and as provost of the College of Humanities, how, how, you, how is your outfit going to help in sustaining something like this? Um, in the first place, in the college, what we've done is to make it possible for students to do cross-learning. So you can be in the business school and then you come and pick a course in archaeology for one semester. You can be in the um, law or social sciences, wherever. That's number one. Number two... The fact that I'm here shows that I take this thing very, very seriously. So I believe in what they are doing. It's not only current knowledge that is knowledge. A lot of knowledge is of a historical basis, archaeological basis, and that helps development as well. If you are listening to the dean in his speech, he said that when something needs to be excavated, we need to have something called an archaeological impact assessment. Currently, a lot of people only know about environmental impact assets, but archaeological impact assessment is also very, very key. So these things that they are bringing to life are really bringing to the fore the importance of archaeology and how that fits into modern life. So we, we support it wholeheartedly. And are you going to help in drafting this policy? Um, that's uh, for the, the department to start. When they start, it goes through the processes and they will support it at the college. No problems at all. Thank you so much, Prof. Don't forget that we also use it as sites for student school work as well. So students go and touch and feel and see what they've been learning in books right on the ground. So that's also very important for student training. I rightly said the law is a bit old and uh, so there's a need for us to review the law. I think that once that is done, then it, it can take off because until then, the law only talks about the Department of Archaeology taking permit and other few ones, but it's, it's, it's old. It's, uh, old, it's in the 60s, and so it's something that the new board, the governing board is trying to take it up so that we can make changes to the law. And I think that once that changes are done, it is also a way of generating revenue because it means that all earth movement machines before you move to site, you need to come for permits so that the HIE will be done. And so I think that it is something that, as a nation, we need to look at. Because other than that, we'll be losing the vital areas of our history, which will not be good for us. Because it is important that we try to maintain the history so that the children yet unborn will come and know where we came from and where we are, what happened at this time, what was going on here, and all that. It is important that, as a country, we make frantic effort to make sure that we preserve history for children yet to born. Yeah. And how soon are we expecting something like this to be out? You know, you know, this matter, when you are talking of law, it's just a matter of a day or two. So for me to tell you today or tomorrow, no. But we'll initiate the process. You know, that's to go through parliament and all that. So, but whatever it is, we have to initiate the process. And that is what I'm saying, that the board want to take it up. And so we'll initiate the process, yeah, as soon as possible. Thank you, sir. You know, drink all this. Yeah, we, we, just, uh, this one will be less than 300 milliliters. But. The one you will find in the prestige. Yes, of 300 years. Now, this is a. a Snaps. JJ Mekis. Uh, JJ Jenkins. And JJ Mekis. You were the importers. 
my exporters of snaps and gin. Thank you. What's your impression about this exhibition? Um, it's certainly very impressive and uh, it gives an idea of what it is that we could possibly be doing with our discipline uh, in terms of not only recovering the history of our country but also that presenting it in a manner that would attract people to want to come not only to see the objects, but also to learn the history that has been unearthed through archaeological works. And so um, certainly I, I, I think that it is the way to go in terms of our country seeking to be able to attract sufficient tourists to come to our country. Uh, we cannot claim to have competitive advantage in say wildlife or in uh, natural places that uh, will attract tourists as much as we have advantage when it comes to heritage. And you can think of the various forms of festivals that we have and the pageantry that comes with them. You can think about the fact that other architectural monuments such as uh, the forts and castles, which of course, if it comes to that, Ghana was the first place where we had the first castle that reflects our interactions with the Europeans. And this uh, Osu project is related to that kind of cultural interactions between us and Europeans. And so it is one of the areas which can uh, bring in a lot more tourists into our country and we need to engage that aspect. And so there is the need that laws are made in a manner that allows for all land movement activities to engage archaeologists to undertake these kinds of assessments, recover not just the past but also tell the story that would allow for us to receive more visitors. And there's this issue about the heritage impact assessment because for now most people know about only the environmental impact assessment. So uh, is, what's the department going to do? You are the head of the department. What are you going to see in the future? Well, we have had the a, a reason to engage some of the development agencies in respect of having to compel them literally to engage in impact assessment because and it's the reason for which we are talking about the law if the law is uh, there and the law is active and the law is enforced then we wouldn't need to be doing these uh, advocacies but of course for example i tell you the story of we power authority when they were to construct that dump <laughs> Despite there was funding in the project document for these impact assessments, they were not willing to do that. And they ran into conflict with the communities because the communities were also unwilling to leave their old settlement site and go to the relocation site or the resettlement site because they have shrines, they have ancestral uh, remains which they didn't want to leave behind. And so it took the intervention of the archaeologists writing to Bui Power Authority. They didn't even uh, budge until Society of Africanist Archaeologists wrote to them and then the impact assessment was done. The communities were now willing to move because their ancestral remains had been relocated to the resettlement site. The shrines that they consider as embodiment and protection of the communities were relocated to the new site and that caused them to, to <laughs> willingly move. And so it, it kind of mitigates a lot of also conflict situations between development and communities. Just last week, within the uh, Asante region, somewhere I've forgotten the name of the community, there is a road project that was going to impact on one of their shrines. The community rules against the contractor not to touch the shrine. Or that even if they needed to do that, then there had to be some form of ritual performances that would allow for them to relocate the, 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 the shrine. And so impact assessments are very critical, not only in the recovery of our history and the materials associated, but also in mitigating potential conflict between development and communities. And how soon are we expecting it? We know it's getting a law is a whole process, so, but how soon are we initiating this? In actual fact, I would think with uh, the preliminary uh, conversations have started, there were some drafts that were done around 2000. Um, it will not be too difficult to go back to that. And so, uh, off conversation with the Ghana Museums and Monuments Board Executive Director, there's an agreement that we need to have a meeting very quickly and then to look at the way forward in, in doing this. And I think that is critical. We are going to engage that as quickly as possible. And we we'll, certainly will be calling on members of parliament to support that kind of effort because uh, our heritage is so critical. And it is the reason for which even the Forts and Castles, the Asante traditional buildings, they have become a global thing. They are now well heritage resources. And so it is possible to develop and to ensure that our heritage assumes a certain value that becomes something that would uh, attract people to our part of the world. Okay. Now, before we have our notes, okay, where are you from? 
spirit. So before the whole the dollar or the market to be just the kind of this is what we produce to exchange goods and services. You understand? Yeah. 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 Good question. Okay, so they were using those very small ones. Have you seen that? Right? See the small ones? This, this way, the ones that were used as chemists. So tell us, what's the motivation behind this exhibition? Well, as you can uh, see, it's, uh, it's been titled uh, Savage Archaeology and the Marine Drive Heritage of Osu. It's um, an exhibition that showcases materials that we salvage from a site where they are going to build a marine drive, you know, uh, a, how do you call it, uh, estate. Uh, and it's made up of some high end, you know, uh, facilities. Uh, conference facilities, um, leisure facilities, and some uh, state, you know, buildings. And uh, I believe there's also going to be a museum there and other uh, luxury apartments and all that. So it's a flagship program or initiative being developed by the government, but the planning began in the 60s, as I mentioned. Uh, the motivation to exhibit this is based on what we did. Uh, we intervene with salvage archaeology as a technique of recovering materials of the past when they are being destroyed by earth moving activities associated with modernization. And that was exactly what was happening uh, four years ago. When we got wind of it, we went there and then we went into action, did a reconnaissance, and collected all those materials that were being exposed. So if you are seeing them today, uh, these were the things that we excavated and uh, salvaged from being destroyed. Great work there, but it seems that like you have an issue with the uh, policy, heritage impact assessment policy, as the Dean rightly mentioned. Uh, for now, most people know about the environmental impact assessment once you're about to build or put up a structure. Um, what do you see when it comes to the lack of this policy in our, in our provisions, the law provisions? I think uh, it's uh, doing more harm than good in the sense that when we have a heritage impact assessment law in place, it will mandate all F moving industries to seek the assistance of archaeology in terms of archaeological explorations of all sites that are going to be destroyed or be dug up for development. When archaeologists are used, they are able to salvage remains of the past. You are building a modern structure. What about what our ancestors built before? Why can't we also learn from them? Why do we destroy them to build new things? So our uh, profession requires us to salvage those remains. So we do it better when there are laws governing it. So if a law is put in place, no agency, real estate agency, railway contractor, or a highway contractor can go out there to start digging without permit from the archaeologist, without archaeological um, surveys being done to identify and um, salvage in order to uh, conserve them for the future generation. So I do have a beef. Currently, the 1969 Antiquities Law is outdated. Uh, the allies associated with it are also out outdated. We need to, you know, amend them. And uh, I believe the Ghana Museums and Monuments Board, uh, as is now constituted, should take it up and then more or less come up with new provisions in there. And this can be pushed to Parliament for them to, um, you know, discuss and process it uh, so that the uh, President can sign it into a law. Yeah. And, and then the good side about it is that once we have a law like that, um, it's going to be mandatory for all construction firms to make use of archaeologists. Now, we train so many archaeologists. We graduate them. <laughs> and then they become part of the unemployed uh, group of uh, uh, people in the country. But we train them to be specialists. So if there's a law which requires that company A you are getting this lot to develop this plot or de develop this road or this railway. 
they are going to put out a bid. And then, if imagine my student who is a graduate can team up with a five other archaeologists, for, uh, set up a firm, and bid for that project. That is what we want to encourage. Yeah, so that at least those people can gain employment. And they are not going to be paid by the government. They are going to be paid by the, the, the contractor. You know, because 1% is built into the, uh, the project contract for such impact assessments to be done. How soon do you expect this policy to be out there? You know, the GMMB director was here, so I think um, we're going to push that as soon as possible a team will be constituted to look at the bill as it is and then prefer some new um, measures and need for it to, to be pushed to the next level. So as soon as practicable, I think uh, if it's not done by next year, then it means we are not really working.